This is the border between West Germany and Eastern Europe. Here is where Winston Churchill's simile of the Iron Curtain is made terrifyingly real. Hundreds of miles along the boundaries of East Germany, that attack would come should the communists employ armed force to press their dream of world domination. So it is that men of the United States Army patrol the roads along the fence, on watch day and night. These men are the border watchers. The roving patrols are backed up by a series of fixed observation points operated on a 24-hour, seven-day basis by troops or cavalry regiment. Atop the tower, trained eyes constantly scan enemy territory. Three men walking, northeast, northeast of Tower 2. Seem to be checking fence, carrying on right shoulder 58 Papa automatic weapons. Still observing. The search is for anything out of the ordinary. Even slight changes in familiar scenes can be significant. Traffic on a road seldom used, a new building, a fresh clearing, an increase in personnel at a check watchtower. Whatever the activity reported by the observer, the sergeant in charge immediately phones it back to higher headquarters. A photographic record of the activity is also made to be relayed back to base for study. The hundreds of miles of border the second armored cab must patrol, its remoteness from regimental headquarters, has required the establishment of semi-permanent base camps like this one. Line troops of the regiment rotate monthly duty assignments here, sending out mounted patrols and the men who man the outposts. It is at the base camp that each jeep patrol is carefully debriefed. Cavalry means movement, and the border watchers must be ready to roll day or night. This constant readiness demands the highest quality of maintenance. The mechanic perform prodigies of labor to keep equipment operational. The same sense of urgency motivates signal technicians. Men, as well as equipment, must be kept in a high state of readiness. Repeated practice alerts, called without warning, train the troopers to move out fast, but in perfect order, without getting in one another's way. While this mechanized infantry squad enters its armored personnel carrier, Tank crews mount their M60A1 tanks. The main gun is unlocked. Tube and turret action are checked. While the powerful diesel engine warms up, the steel giant stirs into motion. The convoy is rolling. Or engage in tactical maneuvers. Frequently, the maneuvers are large scale testing the operational readiness of major cavalry units such as squadrons. These operational readiness tests, ORTs, are carried out under simulated battlefield conditions. Attack and counterattack. Sharing the border watch with the second cav is the 14th Armored Cavalry Regiment. It patrols a shorter stretch of border along East Germany running north. The northernmost section of the border is manned by British troops. Headquarters of the 14th is at Fulda. Since its squadrons are located close to the border, no advanced base camps are required. Border watch activity is carried out much like the 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment there are a series of fixed observation posts manned by troopers on 24-hour ships. Here, too, the watch reports any and all activity on the East German side, no matter how routine or slight. There is an added stimulus to observation. This area of Germany is known as the Fulda Gap. Peaceful in appearance, 
It is an historical invasion route from the east. So the border watchers keep their powder dry and their weapons ready to use if need be. Flying cavalrymen make daily border sweeps. They are grounded only when inclement weather limits aerial observation. The main task of watching the enemy side falls on the mobile ground patrols. Their visibility is least impaired by bad weather. Communist border guards scrutinize us with equal intensity. The East Germans seem to make themselves more visible than the Czechs. Note that the fence that runs here is a double one. The East Germans are diligent in keeping them in good repair. They also conduct surveillance from the air. Their helicopters are Russian-made and fast. Their pilots are skilled. Communist watchfulness is meant more for their own people than for us. A trap for would-be escapees is seen below from one of our helicopters. Long strips of earth are plowed close to the fence. When the earth is soft, it leaves telltale footprints of anyone attempting to flee the communist paradise. The soft, fresh earth holds a deadly menace. It is seeded with mines. The warning sign is ours. Concrete bunkers crop up at intervals. They are sighted so as to command a wide field of fire along the fence. The striped border markers bring a slight touch of color relief to the grim scene. Stones painted yellow also serve to mark the boundary line. One of the grotesque results of the division between East and West Germany is this house that straddles the boundary line. Its occupants abandon the part on East German territory and live only on the West German side. West Germans patrol their border jointly with the U.S. cavalrymen. They make contact frequently to exchange information. 109 over to Theopolstorff and then to 107 where we're presently located. The 14th has a dual mission in Germany, to patrol the border and to carry out a delaying action should the enemy pour his massive strength across the border. The modern U.S. cavalry regiment is formidably equipped for this purpose. This impressive array of tanks and armored vehicles belong to just one line platoon. Each platoon is backed up by the additional firepower of a squadron tank troop. And the heavy guns of a self-propelled 155 millimeter howitzer battery. Helicopters add an aerial dimension to its ground reconnaissance capabilities. Training in an armored cavalry regiment is rigorous. Tank men must pass an annual tank crew qualification course. Their effectiveness in simulated combat situations is carefully judged. Soldiers must also undergo strenuous tests in what is known as MISPIC, Mechanized Infantry Squad Proficiency Course. Like the tank crew qualification course, MISPIC sets up typical combat situations in which the level of skill, teamwork, and aggressiveness. Howitzer batteries, 
and 4.2 mortar crews must also pass annual qualification tests. It is all a far, far cry from the horse and saber days. The cavalry steeds are of iron now, and have, and have even taken wing, like Pegasus. The thunder of horses' hooves has given way to the clank of tread and the beat of rotor blade. But the spirit of the past still rides with the 2nd and 14th Armored Cavalry Regiment. The cavalryman's traditional dash and boldness, his fierce pride in the battle history of his regiment, burn as strong as ever. And World War II. The Philippine Moros two generations ago and won imperishable fame in World War II in the breakout at San Lo, the Battle of the Bulge, and the capture of the Remagen Bridge. Yes, the cavalry traditions of honor, valor, dedication, are very much alive today. Here, on the West German border, there is no questioning as to why men are prepared to fight. The issue is clear. Freedom is at stake. And these two great cavalry regiments, the Border Watchers, will, if need be, fight to preserve it.